Every year at the end of summer, migrant workers flock to Maine to help rake in the blueberry harvest. While they come from many places and from many walks of life, few have as interesting a background as David Brooks Stess. A Florida-raised and New York City-based photographer, Stess is not the type of person you'd expect to find on the Barrens. But every year, he trades in his Manhattan apartment for a tent, and spends weeks bouncing from crew to crew, raking blueberries until there just aren't any left to harvest. And every year he brings his camera, slowly amassing a collection of stark, honest portraits that give a face to this diverse and forgotten labor force. This work has become Stess's life project, though it began quite by accident while he and a friend were on a road trip through Maine in 1988. Some locals told them about the harvest, and they decided to check it out for themselves. We went down the road and we found uh, a group of migratory shacks and worker shacks, and there was like a factory there. And it was in the afternoon, and we ran across a young Maine kid, teenage kid, who needed a lift out to his crew out to the field. So we uh, put him in the car, and we started to drive out onto the Barrens, which is what this landscape is called. It was a glacially created landscape. And if you've never been on it, it's it's something like a desert or an Arctic landscape. You're, you're, you're instantly disoriented, and you're driving for miles and miles and miles on these gravel roads. And in the distance, we see these this group of, like, rusted-out vehicles, and there's a bunch of people milling about. We get closer, and you see a bunch of people that look like a bunch of Confederate Army refugees. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die here on the barrens of Maine, Washington County. <laughs> They'll never find my body. And, uh, of course, that didn't turn out to be the case at all. The workers had just finished for the day and were waiting for their paychecks. They hit it off with Stess and invited him to a party that evening. So we went back to the compound, which is called the Strawberry Patch. And I'll tell you what, in that night, it was like nothing I've ever experienced. At that point, it was really kind of like the Wild West. And my God, there was drinking and fighting, and it was really a wild scene. And I'd always loved to pick berries, uh, even as a kid. So I thought to myself, you know, I really wanted to find a photographic project that I could weave into my life. Uh, I was really influenced by a number of documentary photo projects, a book called uh, Gypsies by uh, Czech photographer Joseph Kadelka, and the great life photographer Gene Smith did Minamata, and Bruce Davidson and Danny Lyons, and these people who really weaved this kind of long-form project into their lives, and, and, they, and they photographed it from the inside, and that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to just be an observer. I wanted to be a participant. So, though he had no experience harvesting berries, the next year Stess returned to the Barrens, hoping to join up with the crew from the year before. Unfortunately, by this point, he'd forgotten the crew chief's name. Me up. And, um, you know, the rest, I guess they say, is history. Since then, Stess hasn't missed a harvest in the last 20 years. He's grown to love raking and says his time on the Barrens is a refreshing break from city life. He also goes back because he feels like his photo project isn't done, which might seem surprising given the thousands of rolls of film he shot over the last two decades. But what Stess is trying to capture is subtle, and he wants to make sure he does it in the right way. So, you know, and it takes time to develop relationships with people to where they're comfortable with you taking photographs of them. I mean, I'm, I'm photographing different native communities, you know, local people. Um, a group of inner city squatter kids have found their way to Maine to rake. And, you know, it took me five years to get to know them enough to where, you know, they've really trusted me to be able to photograph them. I've always tried to respect the dignity of the people I'm photographing, especially in a project like this. You know, I mean, I've made lifelong friendships here. Um, it's just something that it happens over time as you get to know people. You, you get to know what you can and can't do. Um, I mean, there's definitely been instances where I probably could have shot some pictures that would have been amazing, but it, it wasn't right. 
Stess's slow, personal approach has resulted in a powerful collection of photos that give a candid portrayal of this lifestyle, which, as the blueberry harvest becomes more mechanized, dies out more and more each year. Stess feels like the project only needs a few more harvests to be truly finished, but he's already begun showing selections of his work at galleries around Maine. He hopes his work will preserve a sense of what this lifestyle was like, and help people understand those who chose to live it. You know, I want them to get a sense of, of the people who do this. I, I want to, you know, I'm trying to show these people as, you know, real, complete human beings, complex people, you know, and maybe you'll be able to, to, to somehow relate some of this as a viewer to your own life. Yeah, I hope you'll get a sense of, of, of this world and see at least a little bit of the magic that I've seen in it.